Welcome to Perfect Python, the series where I show you how to take your code to the next level, perfection. In the last few videos we've talked about code formatting, but in this video we're talking about something a little bit different. Now as I'm sure you're well aware, Python is a dynamically typed language, and this video isn't going to change that. We're not going to you know, suddenly make Python statically typed. However, while dynamic typing does have its uses, static typing also has its uses. It allows autocomplete tools to work more effectively, and it also provides a user with an idea, or even a maintainer an idea, of what exactly is going on in your program. Enforcing static types is becoming more and more common in Python projects, and this video will show you exactly how to do it. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider liking it to let me know, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. I've actually already done a video covering the basics of type hints. If you want to learn how they work, and kind of, you know, even what they are, then there'll be a video in the top right, uh, as you're looking at it, with my uh, with my how to Python video on them. Uh, this video is not going to cover that. This is specifically going to cover the enforcement of type hints across your um, across your project using PyPy. Not PyPy, MyPy. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Before we start, there is another tool called Pyrite that some people prefer. I personally don't. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too early to really be used properly in production. It's good alongside MyPy as an additional extra because it does pick up a few things that MyPy misses. But we're just going to cover MyPy for now as it's is it's by far the most common of the two, um, uh, or the most commonly used of the two, I should really say. Um, but yeah, there are two ways to use it. The first, once you've installed it, I've I've already taken a test of this, so it's already um, it's already installed. Uh, but you can do pip install mypy, I didn't even tell you that, uh, pip install mypy to install it. And then you can either just use it from the command line, or you can use it in Visual Studio Code. Now I'll, uh, I'll give you an example and I'll show you how to do both, kind of one after the other. So we're going to have a function here called add numbers, uh, very similar to what we had in the formatting video. And we're going to add you know, these two numbers together. And if we run, you know, mypy on this code, so we're just going to run it on type hints, otherwise it's going to complain about the others as well. It's going to find no issues. And this is because we've, like, not specified any type hints. So there's technically nothing wrong. You know, if we were to put a uh, an, an invalid type hint, to so say if, you know, this was going to be none, um, oh god, and this was going to be like, I don't know, a dictionary or something. And then doing these things, what have I done here? I've done that all wrong. <laughs> there we go. That's that's how you're supposed to do that. Uh, then it will start complaining. It will say, you know, unsupported left operand type for none. Uh, and you'll see that it's also coming up on here as well. And that's because I've, I've actually already set it up in Visual Studio Code for this project. What you can do is you can open the command palette using Control shift p uh, type in linter and you should get python select linter and then you uh, move down to mypy. And that selects mypy as your default linter and then, you know, as you can see, we just get this, you know, at, well, I was going to say at runtime, not even runtime, just in real time as we're developing it, which is really nice. Uh, so we have the, that exact same error as we had before. So we can just correct these errors by you know removing the type hints. And everything is hunky-dory. But I said we were going to be enforcing type hints across our project, and that means that everything needs to be typed, everything needs to be statically typed, and everything needs to be correct. And what we can do there is we can uh, start mypy in, I don't know what I've hit there, there we go, uh, in, in strict mode. So on a CLI, we can set strict like that. And now, actually, you know, I've done the wrong thing again. Uh, I just want it to do the type hints, otherwise it's going to do a lot of things that I want. And now it's going to say that our function is missing a type annotation. So this isn't type hinted at all, so therefore it is wrong. To activate this strict mode in VS Code, there are two ways of doing it. The way that I know how to do it, I don't know how to do it the other way, I just know it's possible is by having a pyproject.toml um, file. Now, if you're uh, you know, building a Python package index package, then you probably already have one of these. Uh, if you don't have one of these, then you can just add it. 
Um, and what you can do is you can do tool.mypy and you can select strict equals true. Uh, not with a capital T though, because it's Tomal, not Python. Ugh, if I could spell, there we go. And now if we come back here, it will now complain saying that the function is missing a type annotation. So now we can have it in real time without having to run the command. Um, so in our case, we can do an int, an int, and it's going to return an int. And now everything is fine. And if we run the CLI again, everything is now fine. So everything is statically typed. It works. It's all good. Um, you know, if you pass something that may not be fine, it will tell you. So in this said, so in this um, uh, context, it's saying that because n1 can be an integer or none, then you know it's not possible to to do that. It might break. So you can do say if not n1, you can just return uh, zero, and then it won't complain that about that at all because now um, it can only possibly be int here. So it's fine because we've uh, we've in uh, we've if conditioned. If I can actually talk today, that would be amazing. Uh, we've if conditioned the non possibility out of the function, so therefore it's no longer a problem. Another thing it picks up is when it can't identify the type hint of a list or a dictionary if you define it. So if you were to define an initial, sorry my phone, I put that on do not disturb and it still went off. That's really annoying. Um, so if you have an initial like that, it will say, that it needs a type in for initial because it can't tell right now uh, what type in it is. If you were to do say, you know, one, uh, one, it wouldn't matter because it knows, oh, it's a string to an int mapping and this will be able to pick it up here. It's basically what pylance can pick up as far as I can tell. Uh, but because it doesn't know, it complains. What you can do in Python 3.10 or if you import future annotations, you can do dict string int and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm expecting a, a string and an int here now. And that's the same for lists, the same for tuples, I'm pretty sure as well. Uh, tuples are slightly bizarre. Uh, and it's actually worth talking about. So if you were to have like, so we'll just use the same variable. So if you were to have uh, a list, for example, you can get away with saying list string if you wanted a, you know, a list of strings, or you can say, if it could have numbers in it as well, you could have lift, list, string, or int. And with tuples, is a bit different. Because if you have a tuple here, <clears throat> it's now expecting, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's now expecting exactly one element. Uh, so if you were to put in, say, one here, then it's fine. But if you were to put that in here, it now complains because it's a, it's a two element tuple, not a one element tuple like we were expecting or like it was expecting. What we can do is if, if we want it to be kind of, it doesn't matter how many elements are in it, we can pass a dot, dot, dot as the second argument. And suddenly it is a tuple of strings of any amount. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird syntax, but it does work quite well. So you can have, you know, string here. And so this one will need to be a string and this one will need to be a string. Or you can just do that and it'll be like, oh, it's a, it's a, a string of, of anything basically. I could go on for hours about all the things that MyPy does. It's very much, well, like Black and Isort, really, where there are so many different things that it does. It's not absolutely perfect. It will take time to get used to, but it's really rewarding uh, once you get used to it. And it's actually really nice to have things that type hinted because it, it really helps out with autocompletes and stuff like that. Um, there is one more thing that I want to show you which is sort of a more complicated error message. Um, that's a bit strange and might trip uh, some people up. So I've got it on the paste buffer because I couldn't be asked to type all this out. Uh, so we have our parent class and then we have a child class uh, that inherits from parent and both have a capitalized method, uh, the child's of which is overloaded from the parent's method. Uh, so there are valid overloads that you can do uh, so you can, you know, add an extra, you know, optional keyword argument, for example, and it would be fine with that. However, what you can't do is something like this. So we've set text to be a string in the parent, but in the child, we've set text to be an integer. And this, as we can see, um, violates the Lizkov substitution principle. Um, 
So the Liz Cross substitution principle says that relationship of how subtypes and supertypes should ensure that any property proved about a supertype object also holds for its subtype objects. Essentially, this isn't the same as this. Like it, It's not backwards compatible. It's a breaking change. It would be like if I were to change you know, something in the code, like if I were to change the parent, for example, to an int, that would be a breaking change because the functionality would be completely different. Um, and this is basically just like the same sort of thing. There are arguments to be made about whether there are instances where this should be okay. However, according to MyPy and according to Lizkoff and according to this substitution principle, it's not okay. Um, and MyPy does a, a decent job of bringing this up. There are actually two types of errors you can get. There's a, a more verbose error than this, um, which unfortunately we haven't gotten here. <laughs> Um, and then there is this one that just says it violates the Liskov substitution principle. Um, but basically, yeah, I just wanted to show that one off because it's a slightly awkward one. And, you know, I feel as though it's one that people are probably going to run into at some point because I ran into it at some point and then it was complaining and it was it was quite confusing. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, then consider hitting the like button to let me know. It helps me out a lot. And just consider subscribing as well for more content like this. I'm going to continue the Perfect Python series. I'm at the end of my initial three, so I don't actually know what episode is coming next. I need to think about that. Um, but there are, you know, a good number of, of modules and libraries and all sorts of things that I want to cover. Um, so, you know, it'll all be covered at some point. It's just, you know, the order, which I don't know. Um, but yeah, before I go, I want to thank all my amazing patrons on screen now. One per month, and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time for either the continuation of the Perfect Python series or maybe something different before we get back into this. Um, so I'll see you for that.